Hey, it's Sherry with TradeTheFifth.com. Just going to go through a quick video here for the indexes and uh, send out the levels for Paul. Going to start out with the IWM Russell. Uh, we were looking a little bit more bullish going into the uh, week last week. Last week was a monthly options expiration. Um, so I think I'm going to be looking for a little bit more clarity this week uh, as we go into probably the biggest bulk of uh, the bigger company earnings next week. And I'll leave it for you to look up uh, all the companies that are reporting earnings next week and which days are reporting, but I think uh, around midweek to Wednesday, Thursday are probably the two bigger days. In any event, uh, we've got Wednesday, uh, excuse me, the um, weekly chart here in IWM. We had a pretty negative close towards the week, towards the bottom half of the week. Uh, volume was a little bit off the week before and we've been in a declining volume stage here in the weekly uh, for a little bit of a while but you can see the RSI is starting to hook over a little bit and the MACD is flattening out we're losing momentum it's a little bit more prevalent in the daily we did close just below the 200 simple moving average for IWM um, and that's a little bit of a concern we had a pretty bearish day here on uh, Wednesday Friday was a day off, um, Good Friday for U.S. markets. Uh, on the pullback, we are getting increasing volume. That's also another area of concern. Momentum is dropping here in, in RSI. The, the two-week RSI look back is dropping, and we did see some uh, pretty negative look in MACD, and we now have crossed below the zero line, which indicates the three-period simple moving averages below the 10 period simple moving average. Um, I'm going to be looking for potential support here in the cloud and another uh, move back up in IWM. It clearly the Russell has been the weaker one. Um, you know I'll show you in a second the Qs are back to all-time highs but the Russell is, uh, is quite a bit off uh, of its all-time highs. We're still within this high-low range. You know we're chopping around in a consolidation pattern here in IWM and with the monthly expirations, um, I wouldn't take too much stock into this close. Uh, next week will be a much bigger week uh, in my mind to be looking at and seeing what direction the Russell has and seeing if it's in fact the canary in the coal mine for maybe a bigger pullback in the indexes. If I look at the Qs, as I said, we did make an all-time high in the queues. Uh, another, you know, big big cap tech is, is <coughs> excuse me, quite bullish. Uh, was another uh, strong week on the close. The volume continues to fall off, not surprised. It was a four-day week, um, so I think if, if it was not a four-day week, it probably would have been at least the same as the week before, if not a little bit higher. All the momentum indicators continue to go higher on the weekly. Uh, we're in the oversold zone, uh, overbought zone in the triple Qs on the daily chart, uh, and we do have an uphooking momentum, meaning the three and ten period simple moving averages are moving farther away from each other uh, here going into the week. Uh, the close was a little bit uh, negative. Not surprised. We you know hit all time highs and had just a little bit of a pullback uh, and indecision. Indecision. We closed. Uh, you know, in an indecision uh, doji type day on uh, Thursday. And I think, uh, again, it was options expiration for the monthly options, and it was on a shortened work week. So, I, again, I wouldn't take too much stock into that. I think the week's earnings will probably drive the triple Qs uh, one way or another. You can see that it is pulled quite a bit away from the cloud. That's probably another indication that we may end up getting a little bit of chop and, and uh, consolidation up in this zone and look for the cloud to kind of pick up, um, you know, close the gap on distance. Uh, and unless some earnings are a bit of a negative surprise, I probably don't see much of a reason for strong pullback in the queues. Apple had a pretty good week, and uh, several other big tech stock, uh, big cap tech stocks um, had a good week. All right, SPY. The S&P 500, you know, one thing I will talk about here, I mentioned this, I think, last week and the week after. We did have one day where the VIX started to pull outside of the lower end of the Bollinger Bands, and typically we've seen somewhat reliable indication of uh, a halting of upward momentum and, and a bit of a pullback, and we did see 
something like that here we you know hit a low period and we had a pull back within a couple days and we had some similar things back here right we had this uh, uh, touch outside the Bollinger Bands and we had some pullbacks and a pretty good pullback here and then once we got outside it on the high side we ended up coming back up again so on uh, Wednesday this week we did get a a punch uh, outside the lower end of the Bollinger Band uh, which means that you know we've had um, uh, low volatility in or we've had a lack of buying in put options or the fear indexes at its lower end of the scale and once that happened we did get a little bit of a, a buying in puts I think and it drove the index down a little bit um, we had the Mueller report last week which was a big fat nothing burger I think overall but um, you know more or less I think we had a relatively choppy balanced week uh, into you know going into a holiday close if I zoom in a little bit here on the weekly you know the momentum is still pointing upwards all, all although it is flattening out a little bit we did get the pullback I talked about here on increasing uh, volume and the volume starting to pick up and get pretty decent one thing that is a little bit of a worry is you can see negative divergence again here in the MACD you know we've got the higher high we've got a high here and we've got a higher high in price but a very low or weak momentum indicator and this indicates that we may end up um, you know in a chop or a pullback zone in ES going into next week again big earnings week so anything can happen but um, you know right now it looks to me as we as a, we approach the all-time highs in ES we broke it in NQ and well behind in the Russell um, it looks like we're in for maybe a bit of a pullback or at least a pause in consolidation and the earnings this week will probably give us uh, direction on that one way or the other it's a it's a week let's put the yellow light for caution out for next week and looking at um, you know what we might be in for expected move wise we did sit within the expected moves for the week and coming up into next week see if I can open that EM yes look at the expected move for the week and I'm gonna to go to my I'm gonna to go to a little different style chart here I'm gonna to go to a Renko chart and this is a 10 day 10 and I'm gonna go down to four ticks just a four tick range chart and it kind of gets some of the noise out of uh, things that are going on and I do want to point out that uh, one level to watch for that's a pretty strong level uh, going into next week and I've seen this you know get hit several times of course we've got the big figure at 2900 uh, we've you know been bouncing we've tested it several times last week two or three times I think um, you know in a short week and we've come up to this 2911 area and we've kind of hit that and rejected several times so right now to me it looks like we're looking to break out of above 2911 maybe get to all-time highs in the ES uh, or watch the 2900 area for a break below it and acceptance right so we had several tests below uh, that down as uh, as low as 2894 I think that was in extended hours nope I've extended hours off okay so this is just an area this this zone from 2900 to 2911 is just one to watch carefully and see if we can break above and hold 2911 and get back towards uh, new all-time highs if I look at the expected move in ES, I believe it takes us, yep, uh, $49 expected move for the week. I wouldn't say that's a super high volatility number, but it is picking up a little bit, you know, a dollar, two, three dollars a, a week. Um, you know, with the big chunk, I think 100 S&P 500 companies report earnings next week, so not surprising we're seeing a little bit pick up in volatility. Uh, but we've got you know the low down here at 2861 and the high of 2559 you know for the close on Friday that's for the one week's um, expected move doesn't mean we can't eclipse that that's a one standard deviation move and certainly during the week we can close outside it and then uh, you know pull back in by the end of the week and we've seen that happen a few times 
All right, so that's ES in YM. I think the expected move would also take us up to new all-time highs. If I look up here, I think we're going to find, yep, a $470 expected move for YM. And you can see, you know, last week, um, it, it, you know, it's been pretty muted. Let me just get to a bigger chart here so we can look at this a little bit. And I'm going to add more days to the time frame, say 30 days, and get more in the chart. And let's see, so this is basically last week uh, that shows up in the, in the window on a uh, four tick range chart for uh, the YM. You know, we do have still a gap to close below us, but you can see it's relatively you know muted week we had a lot of chop around and you know within a relatively tight zone we tested out tested back down testing up again and you know I look for the breakout above this uh, basically 27,000 uh, number for YM as we get towards the uh, all-time highs up here uh, way up here at uh, 20 well, this is the non-back adjusted numbers up here, so they're going to be different than what this chart looks like. But uh, 27,000 unadjusted, not back adjusted, um, you know, for this all-time high, and we're sitting at uh, 26.6 here. So, you know, got a little ways to go, of course, to get up to those all-time highs, but we'll be looking for, you know, maybe if I drew a price channel, you know, from this low to this low, and then opened it up. We're going to be, you know, maybe in an uptrend here for the short term in the next week as we look forward. And NQ has still been the monster. Expected move for NQ is on uh, 170 points, which is pretty much what it was last week, you know, which gets us up here to about 78.85 ish range. Uh, we did have a bit of a pullback. And we are starting to move back up. If I show this on a 10 tick, uh, let's see, go to the 10 tick range. This one's a little bit better. So it's about two and a half points on NQ. You can see that, you know, this uh, 76, 78 ish range has held a support pretty strongly. It is a high volume node, and now it's showing some, you know, pretty good support activity. We did have one test below it, but we then, you know, quickly moved above it. So 76, 78 range, 76, 80 in that zone is probably good support. If we start breaking below it and find acceptance, we may find a, a bit more deeply of a pullback in uh, NQ. But at this point, I think, you know, it looks like we're still pretty bullish in NQ, and I think we look for... Um, you know, the earnings to maybe propel us to new, newer highs. All right, guys, that's it for the week. I'll send out the video. Paul should post it during the week. Uh, hopefully he'll get it out uh, Monday morning, and uh, from there we'll take it and see how it goes. Thanks. Take care. Bye.